We will sing the alma mater. graduation with great gratitude for the many blessings we have received and go forth richly nourished to face the many challenges that lie ahead. Please be seated. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Dr. Kathy Murgett, Vice President and Dean of Student Affairs. And we are extremely pleased to welcome all of you, friends and families of the graduates, our keynote speaker, Chef David Breeden. Of course, our honored guests, all of you, as we celebrate the completion of today's graduates from the Associate Degree Program in Culinary Arts. I actually remember welcoming you all when you first arrived to campus on move-in day. Hello, all those parents again. And I'm proud today to wish you well as your next exciting chapter begins. During your new stu student orientation, we shared that when you reached graduation, you would not be the same students as you were when you started. You would have matured and changed in countless ways. And today, for many wonderful and very hard-earned reasons, this holds true. In addition to your culinary skills, you have been able to develop your mise en place for everyday life. Today, more than any other time you've experienced to date, you will need to rely on these skills as you navigate a changing landscape 
in which you have the opportunity to make an incredibly positive and transformative impact. Know that the CIA stands with you and by you. You are our future. <coughs> Just as we are proud of your accomplishments and contributions, we are also uh, enormously proud of our roots. Founded in 1946, our doors were open to veterans returning from World War II to serve as an educational institution training veterans in the culinary arts. Over these past 77 years, the CIA has evolved into a college offering associate, bachelor's, and master's degrees while always remembering our beginnings. With that said, please join me in acknowledging two of our students who are veterans of the United States Armed Forces, and I ask you to please stand and be recognized. Diana Aguirre and James Wong. values of the college is respect for diversity. Our students, faculty, and staff come from over 49 nations and 15 languages are spoken here. We believe that diversity promotes personal growth and a healthy society. That diversity challenges stereotyped preconceptions. It encourages critical thinking and it helps students learn to communicate effectively with people of varied backgrounds. The diversity represented by this group of graduates is an example of the changing face of the hospitality and food service industry. Our great strength is found in weaving together their many threads of experience, education, and culture. And these students brought to the CIA from all parts of the country and the globe are now stronger from this diversity and are prepared to launch their new careers in the food world. Our student body at any given time comes from all 50 states and U.S. territories. There are 25 states that are represented in today's graduating class. These include students from New York and the neighboring states of Connecticut, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. This class also has students who hail from the New England and Mid-Atlantic states of Maryland, Massachusetts, and Virginia, the Midwestern states of Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Nebraska, Michigan, Missouri, Ohio, and Wisconsin, the southern states of Alabama, Florida, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas, and the western and Pacific northwest states of California and Oregon. There are seven other countries represented by 17 students in our graduating class today, and I ask these graduates to please stand and be recognized. From Canada, Paige Lewis. From China, Shin Ran Rao. From Great Britain, Joshua Tuckfield. From Indonesia, Erin Sutiano. We have five students from India, Disha Andamakale, Kanupriya Bhutani, Bathra Mohan, Gershish Dupur, and Kalagara Thrushna. Join me as well in congratulating six students from South Korea. Huan Ha, Jill Ha, Jun Ha Wen, uh, Gyalwon Kang, Mishan Kim, Jahan Ku, and Siwoo Yoon. From Thailand, Vijer Lee, and now I am 
pleased to introduce a member of your graduating class who will deliver the address of welcome on your behalf. Please welcome your classmate, Basil Sinclair Washington. Speaker Chef David Breeden, honored guests, Bagginses, Boffins, Tukes, and Brandy Bucks. Welcome to the Spring of 2024 Culinary Arts Graduation Ceremony. My name is Basil Sinclair Wassinger, and I'm honored to be giving you all the welcoming address on this very special occasion. As a child, the enticing scent of my dad's chicken tortilla soup drew me to the kitchen. Onions, garlic, jalapeno, chipotle, and lime gave the soup its distinct aroma. It was a favorite among my 11 siblings and one of the dishes that drew me to the alchemy of cooking. From simple foods made well, like turkey sandwiches, to culinary masterpieces such as roasted squab with parsnips, I experienced a range of different flavors and techniques at a very young age, guided by the wisdom that Alton Brown in America's Test Kitchen passed on to my family through their cookbooks. My dad and I would often spend hours and hours in the kitchen creating these elaborate dishes and feeding our very large families. Creating dishes in our home kitchens is where many of us graduating today discovered our love for the culinary arts. And while cooking at home allows us to explore the bounds of our creativity, it is cooking at the CIA that establishes the essential disciplines necessary for endless culinary possibilities. It is at the CIA alone where I experience the most, most growth, and I can say, that um, it is the same for every single student graduating with me today. We have worked through many tough classes in a range of different kitchens and under the guidance of highly talented chefs, sometimes as delightfully mercurial as their thermometers, <laughs> and each with their own teaching styles and perspectives. The Culinary Institute of America, through its curriculum and faculty, has done its job and prepared us for the real culinary world. Our education here is a hard experience to be. And that is why we're the world's best culinary college. The fact that we persevered is the very reason we will be the world's next best chefs. We are well prepared to meet our future in the industry, but it would be a folly to believe that the learning ends here. The exceptionalism of our institution does not rest on the premise that we are competing with each other, but rather that we are competing with ourselves. From a philosophical view, some have argued that there are degrees of perfection, a seemingly oxymoronic argument. But if we strive for perfection in everything we do, we enable ourselves to go further and further and to achieve higher levels of perfection. And that's on us. We have been given the skills, now how can we push the boundaries? How can we continue to learn from every experience, good or bad? I encourage you all to uphold the standards of excellence that the CIA teaches, to remain hungry for culinary knowledge, and most importantly, to grow as individuals and as chefs. I wish every single one of you the best, especially those who are with me in the Katarina AM. Thank you so much, and congratulations, Class of 2024. Thank you, Basil. Great job. We look forward to hearing about your accomplishments and contributions, as well as those of your classmates in the years to come. A number of students uh, have particularly distinguished themselves for exceptional performance during their time at the CIA. The students have chosen Chef Lance Nidahara to present the awards to you this afternoon. Let's welcome Chef Nidahara to the podium. Thank <laughs> you. 
<coughs> Thanks for choosing me. It was an honor. You guys look good. No, no stains, huh? Well, graduates, thank you for inviting me to present the student awards this morning. And as you can imagine, our role as faculty is incredibly rewarding. We see you from the beginning of your journey. We say goodbye to you when you leave for externship. And we welcome you back, inevitably as a more confident student. And know, please know, that we saw the confidence in you. You just needed to lean into it. We saw you through the tears of disappointment, especially on egg day, if you have any <laughs> fundamentals. Right? You remember that, right into your ovaries. <laughs> and we celebrated with you in the joy of success. And here you are on your graduation day. And we could not be more proud of how far you have come. And on behalf of the culinary arts faculty, congratulations. And in the immortal words of Tony Stark, now go break some eggs. <laughs> All right, and now it's my pleasure to announce today's Culinary Arts Awards. When your name is called, please join me on stage to receive your award. The first award is the Francis Roth Leadership Award. This award pays tribute to co-founder Francis Roth, whose visionary leadership was foundational to the success of the CIA. Today, we honor a student who exudes not only strong leadership, but who embraces all the core values of the CIA, excellence, leadership, professionalism, ethics, and respect for diversity. Please join me in congratulating Tyler Rosenzweig. Catherine Angel Academic Achievement Award for Culinary Arts. Named in honor of our co-founder, Catherine Angel, this award is based on the highest grade point average achieved by a culinary arts student through their contemporary restaurant classes. Today, we would like to honor Sabrina Lee. Chef Nidahara, and congratulations to you both. Please join me in welcoming Provost Mark Erickson to the podium to introduce our keynote speaker. Today, the Culinary Institute of America is thrilled to welcome the chef who leads the day-to-day -day operations of one of the most prestigious kitchens in the world. Born and raised in East Tennessee, our speaker grew up at the intersection of traditional Appalachian, low country, and French cuisine. After attending culinary school, he moved to South Carolina, where he worked at some of the Charleston's finest restaurants, including the Charleston Grill, McCready's, and Woodlands Resort and Inn. His love of food and commitment to excellence led him to a stagiaire position at the world-famous French Laundry in 2005, later becoming the kitchen's butcher and eventually chef de partie. In 2006, he landed the position of chef de partie at Per Se in New York, where he is, his six-year tenure, he rose to the role of executive sous chef. In 2012, our speaker became the chef de cuisine at the French Laundry. In this role, our speaker dedicated himself to Chef Thomas Keller's philosophy and the collaborative spirit that has made the French Laundry one of the best restaurants in the world. Together with Chef Keller, he co-authored the French Laundry Per Se cookbook and currently is leading the next generation of talented young chefs 
including CI culinary arts master's degree students, and created an unforgettable dining experience at the French Laundry. We are proud to welcome to the CI, Chef David Breeden. trustees, faculty, students, everyone past, present, and future uh, that has been involved at the school. Uh, Dr. Ryan and Chef Keller specifically uh, for allowing me the opportunity to share a few things with you. Um, I want to start with a, a little interactive thing that we do when we start our pre-service meetings. I'm going to say good morning graduates and I need you to reply with great energy Chef, okay? I mean, it's going to help you relax. <laughs> right. Good morning, graduates. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> that was incredible. It gets the mood right. All right. I'm going to share with you two things um, that I'm very well versed in. One is myself. Some things about myself, some things about my past, my travels, and another, of course, is our profession. Um, both quite complex. So, my first steps, a little about me and my journey. I was born uh, August 8th, 1980, in East Tennessee, in the hills. I'm a, a real hillbilly, actually. I was raised in an agricultural community. Uh, we had substantial garden at our home. We grew our own food, we made pickles, preserves, we would put away things that uh, couldn't be consumed fresh. It was a beautiful life. Uh, we, we literally worked, we worked the land. Um, we would hunt fish for sustenance, not sport. It was, a, it was a way of life. And these humble beginnings were one of my greatest blessings. Uh, during this process, I learned a lot of valuable things, so I encourage everyone to get a better understanding of the land that we live on. I lived on a dairy farm uh, as well. Quite an experience, uh, shoveling steaming manure, seven o'clock in the morning. Very uh, hum humbling. It's a thankless job, uh, but it's gotta be done. The stinky pile will need the elevation. That's just part of it. I spent some time uh, working tobacco fields as well. It's not always been a whole cuisine environment for me. I started at seven years old picking up the leaves after the men would go through the field, after they would cut and spud the tobacco. That's a process. I have to explain it. It takes another day. <clears throat> Over the years I've worked every single position in the tobacco growing process, clearing the fields, cutting, spudding, hanging, drying, grading, baling. It's very complex. A uh, bunch of hillbillies out there in the fields, working, just working to the bone. It's an incredibly difficult labor. I learned a lot about how to live outside of the commercial food system in this that so many of us rely on, uh, myself included today. Uh, I developed great work ethic through this process, and I developed a very strong back and a thick skin. I learned, most importantly, the value of a hard day's work and how to earn your sleep at night. There were never restless evenings, I promise you that. That's the, the baseline. A lot of people in Appalachia grow up that way. Um, my professional ambitions were realized sitting at a dinner table with my family. On Sundays, my family would all gather for supper at my grandparents' house after church. It was incredible. All of my aunts, uncles, cousins were there together. It was the warmest experience that I, that I really ever remember civilized, nurturing, kind, everyone together. Most of the time it was kind. Uh, my grandmother would speak her mind and she could be very feisty at times. <laughs> um, I fell in love with that experience. It was, those are the fondest memories of my life. <clears throat> it 
during that process of planning, <clears throat> we would not acknowledge the efforts given, give thanks for the fruits of the soil, and the life of the land. Be grateful for the hands that prepare the meal. Recognizing the grace given by a higher power. I look forward to these Sunday suppers more than anything else. That's where I felt protect protected. It was these memories that gave me thank you. These memories gave me my desire to care for and nurture people through my hands and the shelf. As I grew older, my family dynamic was changing rapidly. There were a lot of challenges, mostly due to my father's tension for drugs and violence. Seeing he had a fondness for incarceration, rehab, he treated like a vacation. Uh, I'm sure we're told sorts. <laughs> uh, the Great Bar Motel, what do you call that? Uh, and I realized the collegiate path was probably not in the books for me. Um, I was going to have to go out and, and try a different way. I was going to sacrifice, dig deep, be bold if I was going to escape that hell I was living in. I literally left home, um, 15 years old, a few dollars in my pocket, satchel on my back, like Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer. Johnny Appleseed. No, no clear path, no direction, just the need to escape and the desire to do so. My greatest asset was and still is a fear of failing. Think about that. <clears throat> I knew what the bottom looked like. I was very well aware of how far down you could go and I refused to live that life. I knew I would never return to it. Another asset was my ignorance. I had no clue how difficult the journey was going to be. But I had no choice. I had to dive in. And I'll share a quote. <clears throat> Out of the darkness is born the light. So my education, my saving grace, as I like to call it, was finding a home in the kitchen. It was incredible. My, my life went from total chaos to order and discipline and snap of a finger. I had everything I needed. All of a sudden I had a schedule to abide by. I was held accountable. I had a clean uniform to wear with pride. I still adore the check pants. I love them. I absolutely love them. I was also fed well. I probably gained 20 pounds my first year in the kitchen. I found a father figure in the chef that would become my first mentor, Seth Zimmerman, and I gained a, I gained a great education as well. All of this, and I was even compensated for my time. I couldn't believe I was getting paid, to be honest with you. <clears throat> what a blessing. So as you can imagine, my introduction to a profession started like many of us, washing dishes, cleaning the kitchen, I did not love this, so I quickly learned new skills to move forward. Um, that fear of failure also was my fear of not being able to progress, that others would have tools I didn't have. So I was very focused on learning as much as I could. All right, so enough about me. I just want to kind of give you some context. I don't have a college education. I don't have a high school education. I don't have uh, a lot of that. But what I have is a life rich with experience and stories, and I've, I've lived vicariously through so many of you and through your experiences and your educations, and we share together and we grow together. That is what has totally enriched my education. So now I'll share with you, <clears throat> over the years I progressed uh, in the kitchen, and I developed a style. I also developed a process for learning. 
the, sum, the process could be summed up in six key tenets, and this is going to be quick. So no sleeping, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I'm going to share these tenets with you in hopes that you may find some value. Uh, and if so, if you use them to help yourself through your life, as they have helped me, and they helped me to mentor uh, my team as well. Number one, be relentlessly organized. I was very fortunate to find my mentor. He told me, first day, mouth closed, eyes and ears open, and write everything down. And that was it. I knew exactly what I had to do. Yes, chef was my answer. Okay, so this gentleman would constantly challenge me, would give me tasks, books to read, quizzes on the facets of classical cuisine. It was through this mentorship that I developed these strengths. And then I learned to be relentlessly organized and prepared for the next task that he would offer me. Write it down and be organized. The next, the next facet. Number two, apply yourself. It's simple. Apply yourself. Show up and be present. Be kind and courteous. Be memorable for good reasons. I know it sounds simple, but these are my top criteria for recruitment. The best adornment, the best adornment for your resume is your smile, your handshake, your presence. They, out, they outweigh every accolade that you can compile. There's simply no substitute for looking someone in the eye and shaking their hand. I read a book called Becoming a Chef by Karen Page. It gave me the perfect recipe for obtaining any position that I had ever wanted. Knock on the door, show up. The concept of staging was completely foreign to me at the time, and the book outlined the process that so many of us had used before. Every impactful position that I've had in my career was gained through knocking on the door, dress for work, clean and press, shoes shine. And I'd always say, Chef, I love your cuisine. May I please observe service tonight? I was never once turned away. They always said yes. At the end of the evening, if I liked the culture, I would say thank you. I would ask if I could return the following day. The following day, if I still enjoyed the experience, I would, and I thought there was an opportunity for educational growth, I would then apply for a position. Imagine the impact that that had. How did I stand out above the resumes? There's a stack of resumes, and here I am in the flesh. I always got the job. It worked every single time. Being committed to your growth is essential. You, and only you, are responsible for your success. What are you willing to give? Number three. Get better at being better. Become a master of mastery. Consider it. Learning how to learn is being a perpetual student and is liberating. There's simply nothing you can't achieve if you apply yourself. The process of learning allows you to continually be inquisitive and grow. You don't always have to have the answer, but you have to know how to get it. You must have the courage and confidence to do so. You must be relentlessly committed to continued education and growth, as many of you are. I'm sure you're moving on to the next degree. Constantly learn new things. Challenge yourself. Never allow yourself to become complacent. That's a huge one. Number four, be just a little better every single day. The law of 1% improvements, also called the principle of marginal gains, is the idea that if you improve just by 1% consistently, those small gains will add up to a remarkable improvement. Exponentially. We see this everywhere in our lives. Think about money in the bank account. Small, small, small savings at a time, compound interest. Incredible, incredible yield. Hit the gym a little more every time, a little more rep one more pound, whatever it may be, incredible gains over time. Rest over it, very important. Your commitment to excellence in hospitality can be compounded greatly as well by your commitment to making small daily improvements in your work, your organization, communication, and execution of tasks. Notice the choice to use the word excellence instead of perfection. And the gentleman that came, came before me, your speech was great, it was awesome. But perfection is a funny word. So just consider this. 
is very intentional. Perfection doesn't really exist. It's subjective to each and every individual. We all have our idea of what perfection is. Have you heard of uh, the Fifty Shades of Steak? <laughs> you heard of this? This is something I explained to my team. The Fifty Shades of Steak are in fact the lens in which we look at, at a beautiful piece of, uh, of beef that's been carved with a cuisson. There's maybe 50, there's 5,000, there's as many as you want. But for a consumer, how many? Five. Five opportunities for, for, for quote-unquote perfection. The lens that I look through, there's one out of 5,000. There's only one perfect. And no one can ever hit it, right? It's, it's a, a fleeting dream, okay? So be excellent. It's a very powerful mindset. Continued excellence. Number five, do sweat the small stuff. Contrary to the books, do sweat the small stuff. The 90-10 rule of outcome and effort. I'll share all this stuff with you guys so you can do a little research on your own. The 90-10 rule of outcome and effort states that 90% of outcome is determined by 10% of your effort. 10% of what you do defines 90% of your life. So the 10% you do is the small stuff. You better be focused. In the same, t in the same vein, 90% of excellence comes from 10% of very focused intent. Think of this as you hone your skills. Yes, the Brunoise is that important. It defines 90% of your work. Focus intently on the fine details. Thousands of repetitions with intention will lead to great reward and foundational skill. Focus on excellence, not perfection. It allows you to take chances and to falter as long as you take note, adjust, and try again. Get back up. And finally, number six, allow yourself to make mistakes. Be okay with that. You're going to anyhow. Don't beat yourself up. Mistakes are great catalysts for growth. Your perspective is what makes them negative. When you push yourself and challenge yourself, you will undoubtedly make small errors, and there will always be opportunities for improvement. When you identify the errors, the fixes, and the circumstances that led to them, please share them with your team, with your colleagues. Don't allow them to make the same errors that you made. Your mistake is now a mentorship tool, and you just leveled up if you choose to see it that way. In the kitchen, here's how we, here's how we do this process. When you make a mistake, you own it, you analyze it, you fix it, you share it, and you move forward. I'm done. I'm not dwelling over yesterday's spilled milk, right? Okay, so that, that's it for the tenets of my, of my learning and growth mindset. These are the coaching tools that I use with my team on, on a daily basis. You will hear these, you will hear these phrases spoken in our kitchen constantly. And, and they're very good, and they're liberating, and they're empowering, and they allow people to challenge themselves. They remind people to grow. Uh, they, they forgive um, people for making mistakes, and they allow the person that made a mistake to now become the teacher, if they choose to share it. Okay? So in the conclusion, <clears throat> your future, I hope I see you guys at the restaurant. I drop my business card here. Uh, your chosen profession, hospitality is the finest profession to develop skills and grow for a lifetime. There are endless opportunities and outlets to express yourself. Each of you now have a very strong foundation to enter your chosen field, to hone your craft, to represent the Culinary Institute of America, to strengthen and elevate our professional to levels we can't imagine. And you're literally standing on the shoulders of giants. Imagine the thousands of repetitions that came before you. Please be open-minded, youthful in ambition, ever inquisitive, and remain a student for life. And I can promise you, you will never graduate. You just move on to the next task. Be a little better every day. Make that commitment to yourself because you deserve it. Congratulations.
afternoon. We're tidy up our, our workstation here, Chef. It's a good time. It's okay. <laughs> Along with welcoming uh, the, the graduating class of April 19th, 2024, Woo! to our Institute alumni family. Yay! recognition and honor upon our commencement speaker, Chef David Breeden, who gave you know, such a uh, powerful message to all of us. <laughs> we appreciate you sharing that. And with that said, I'm pleased to offer the following uh, official proclamation. David Breeden, passionate and dedicated leader. For your leadership in our profession as chef de cuisine in one of the world's greatest restaurants. For striving in every endeavor to achieve the best. Somebody shuffle the deck here. <laughs> For your passion, knowledge, expertise, and constant quest to improve. For your dedication to upholding the French Laundry's exacting standards and being a standard bearer yourself, and for mentoring the next generation of chefs, I hereby proclaim you an ambassador of the Culinary Institute of America and present you with our gold medal and ambassador's certificate. I'll give you the gold medal now. But in addition, we also want to uh, recognize Chef Breeden with a very special honor. This Crystal Chef. It's the Institute's Crystal Chef for Culinary Excellence. And Chef, the, the Crystal Chef represents the clarity of your vision, the dazzling nature of your food, and the brilliance of your career. CI community, please join me in congratulating Chef David. <laughs> It's your turn. We've arrived at the moment our students have been awaiting the conferring of their degrees by the president. I now invite Provost Erickson to the podium to present the culinary arts candidates to President Ryan. Will the candidates for the degree of Associate in Occupational Studies in Culinary Arts please rise. President Ryan, before you, from around this country and the world, stand the disciples of Karem, James Haynes, Escoffier, Mer Brazier, and Paul Bocuse. They are the keepers of the flame, the future standard bearers and innovators of the food world. The faculty and I attest that they have the necessary knowledge, skills, and attitudes required as alumni of our venerable college, and they'll nourish the world with their ideas, practices, and offerings. Culinary arts candidates, I encourage you to charge boldly into the future while remembering and respecting the traditions of the past. The current lofty status of our profession was very difficult to earn and it can be quickly lost. The responsibility to enhance it rather than to diminish it 
now rests squarely upon your shoulders. Take that duty seriously as future generations are depending on your thoughtful stewardship. Based on the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Associates in Occupational Studies in the Culinary Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereof. Please join me in congratulating our culinary arts. degree in culinary arts, Jonah Abalafia. <laughs> Diana Aguirre. <laughs> Christina Alcine. Damien Ali. <laughs> Stephanie May Amar. <laughs> Disha Analan Halea. Matthew Angarola. Samuel Austin. Brian Maple. Thomas Figs. Jaden Black. Cameron Blazer. Sienna Boss. Julia Burgess. Juan Cremona Sanchez. Benjamin Castillo. Jean Chen.
Winter Davis. Samuel Dawson. Leo Diaz. Robert Dittmar. Glenn Dombrowski, Jr. Gershis, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Gershis Duper. Liam Durbin. Dominic Dury. Patrick Dwyer. Joshua Emenheiser. Dimitri Figdor. Alexis Fishley. Yeah. Tara Fleischer. Yeah. Drew Flory. Yeah. Ariel Falwell. Anna Franks. Marku Galicchio. Matthew Garrett. Giselle Gomez. <laughs> Haley Gomillion. <laughs> Eric Gonzalez. <laughs> Ethan Gooch. Jalen Bacchus. Parker Hampton. Bryce Henza. Samuel Hogan. <laughs> Scott Hoy. <laughs> Jamie Humphreys. <laughs> Rowan Hudson Lytle. Wow. 
Hannah Jackson. Isa Isaiah Jimenez. Eric Johnson. Makaya Johnson. Race Johnson. Ryan Johnston. Yuan Kang. Andrew Petuno. Braden Kiefer. Men Chol Kim. Griffin Kincaid. Ryan Klotz. Megan Knut. Joseph Cook. Jahan Koo. Ryan Lee. <laughs> Sabrina Lee. <laughs> Vijer Lee. <laughs> Rachel Leibowitz. Levinson. Paige Lewis. Gregory Lodato. Alexandra Lockley. Roth Graham Mahan Mohan. Joaquin Marquez. Paul Matija. Brooke Matthews. Matthew McDermott. <laughs> Abrina Madonna for Medina. <laughs> Haley Mary. Dominic May Myers. <laughs> Peter Moffrey. <laughs> Ma 
Michael Mayette. <laughs> Liam Narducci. <laughs> Joseph Nocella. Devin Patterson. <laughs> Christian Prada Sanchez. <laughs> Samantha Probus. Vincent Reinhardt. <laughs> Ethan Reyes. <laughs> Mason Roberts. <laughs> Christian Robinson. <laughs> Isabelita Robles. <laughs> Steven Rodriguez. Yes, <laughs> Tyler Rosenzweig. Andrea Sanchez, <laughs> Marut Satra Waha. John Shearer. Leandro Shenerman. Zachary Schwartz. Hunter Swegler. Aaron Sidiamon. <laughs> Jake Shepard. <laughs> Alexis Sisson. <laughs> Elena Smith. Patrick Lewis Snyder. <laughs> Tylo Spellman. <laughs> Lauren Sticklin. <laughs> Fletcher Stoddard.
Michael Stringent. Bryant Suarez Marine. Christopher Suarez. Samuel Sai. Caligarth Rushna. Jillian Toll. Joshua Tuckfield. Simone Ward. Basil Sinclair Wassinger. <laughs> William Wassell. <laughs> Justin White. Sierra Williams. <laughs> Ethan Willis. Samuel Wilson. Sean Wilson. <laughs> Michael with us. Yeah! Let's go, Mike! James Wong. <laughs> Andrew Yu. Kevin Zaluda. <laughs> As today's ceremony comes to a close, we invite you to join us for a reception located in the Student Recreation Center where you can enjoy family, friends, and some really great food. Graduates, we are very proud of your accomplishments and even more so about your future. Do good in the world. You heard this afternoon the industry is waiting and counting on you. And at this time, I'd like to invite President Ryan back to the podium to close the ceremony. Congratulations, stay well, and don't forget to breathe. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. A long time ago, some, some wag, some wise, wise guy, once remarked that, uh, this is the quote, there are times when parenthood seems nothing more, there are times when parenthood seems nothing more than feeding the hand that bites you. <laughs> Another, perhaps wiser soul, had a different take on parenthood, and that person said, this is a quote, parents are often so busy with the physical rearing of children that they miss the glory of parenthood just as the grandeur of the trees is lost when raking leaves. Parents, this is one of those wonderful days when you can set down your rakes 
and appreciate the beauty of the trees that you have helped to nurture. We hope that you enjoy this day, as it is surely a time to revel in the glory of parenthood. And with that said, graduates, I want you to stand and please join me in saluting your parents and your loved ones. Following the ceremony, I want you to give them a hug and let them know that you love them. Cheers to your parents and your loved ones. Okay, graduates, you can sit back down now. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> that's, that's one good thing about their CIA training. If a chef tells them to stand up, they stand up and won't sit down until we tell them to sit down. So good job. Turning our attention back to you, our class, your graduation from the Culinary Institute of America marks the fulfillment of a mission you began when you first came to campus. Now you have many paths before you. Some of you are going to return here to continue your education, while others will be entering the industry directly. Whatever the case, you are all about to join a talented and demanding group of professionals that has transformed the food world. More than 55,000 CIA alumni working in all aspects of the industry in all corners of the globe. So congratulations, and I am now very proud to officially welcome you into the alumni family of the Culinary Institute of America. Consider yourselves graduated! Yeah.